Hello, my name is Tridar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Roman mausoleum in Minecraft. Let's get started. Now, a mausoleum is a structure of built to commemorate the life of someone important and to house their remains. And in Roman times, they didn't have dedicated cemeteries like we do today. But what they would do is they would actually build their mausoleums here along the road so they could be seen by people going in and out of the city. And they came in all shapes and sizes. Uh, some of them were quite unusual, uh, but most of them were fairly standard classical affairs. So that is what I'm going to be showing you here today. Now, the model I'm going to be showing you here is, is of course, this double-tiered round mausoleum with a nice Roman portico stuck on the front there. Of course, all done in the Corinthian order. This is going to be the standard mausoleum, but if you want a more deluxe option for a mausoleum, you might be interested in this one here and I'll be showing you how to build both of these uh, now the central structure in the middle as you can see is the exact same between both of these the only thing different is this one has a larger courtyard more dedicated gardens and it is of course surrounded by a, a peristyle colonnade and it does have a little sculpture on top as well whereas this one over here does not so, uh, let's take a look inside our mausoleum here. We've seen the outside. And as you can see, we have little niches on the sides here for various people to be buried, both uh, down here and up here as well, to place uh, little urns containing their ashes because uh, Romans, they didn't go in for full-on burials. They would always uh, cremate and bury the ashes in little pots there. So here is the interior of the building. Of course, it's the same between both of these. And uh, let's take a look at the materials list. You will need to construct one of these. This materials list here, this is for the uh, regular sized mausoleum. But if you want to build the large sized mausoleum, you will need the same materials, just, uh, just more of them. Uh, so, uh, for this, you will be needing 946 blocks of diorite. 283 blocks of grass or dirt that will turn to grass, 312 blocks of cobble, 13 spruce planks, 153 blocks of gold ore for decoration, 52 oak tree trunks, 400 tree leaves for, for obviously the trees here, but for the shrubs down below here you need a different type of leaf block. So you will need 242 leaves for the shrubberies. You can pick uh, whichever is your favorite leaf block. For those, you will need 155 cobblestone slabs, 49 stone brick slabs, 76 deep slate tile slabs, 124 cobblestone stairs for the garden mulch. We will need 118 blocks of nether rack, 612 stone bricks, 491 stone brick stairs, one door, and 122 blocks of red nether brick. So not too bad, just these uh, standard stuff that I use to build my Roman buildings out of. And before we get, begin the tutorial itself, this isn't going to be a uh, standard block by block. The building is too big for that, so this will be the standard uh, slice fair, which I usually do. However, to save a little bit of time here and there, uh, this tree right here, every tree you will see in this tutorial here, both in the standard version, which has six trees, and um, I think it has six. No, it has four trees. And the deluxe version, which has eight trees. Uh, these are all copied and pasted of the exact same model which you see done here. So I've converted this to, uh, I've converted the leaf blocks to double st uh, stone slabs here. So you can see this uh, in detail. I think it'd be easier if I just show it to you at one glance instead of trying to show you how to build the entire tree. As you can see, it is uh, just a standard re repeating pattern. And just stack your leaf blocks up like that there and uh, that will be the trees so as we go i will not be remarking about the trees again uh, now the dimensions for the building are as follows for the regular version it is 35 by 27 by 37 and for the deluxe model which we will get to at the end of the video this one is going to be uh, 45 by 53 by 45 so if you need to mark out uh, spaces in your world to place these. Perhaps you uh, want to build both models. You can, of course, do that. But for the first one here, 
you want to make out a big rectangle of 35 by 27. Of course, 37 blocks tall, all the way down here to the top up there. Uh, but first, 35 by 27. You want to make a big rectangle here. I've outlined it here with permadirt. So you can see this is the foundation layer. Uh, now this, this sits below uh, everything over here. In other words, the, the height I, I gave you here for 37, it's really 38 if you want to count this block down here. Th this would be the 38th block for that. But here is the foundation for the building, like you see done here. And in the middle, if we want to draw a center line, I think uh, I think that will be the center line there. This building is symmetrical, so is uh, the deluxe model. So what we build over here, we want to mirror image on the other side of the center line, like that there. All right, so in the center, we can uh, count things out a little bit. So if we extend our center line through the building, to get our foundation, we then want to go one, two, three, four blocks that way, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen blocks that way, and then you want to go uh, twenty-seven blocks from there all the way back to here. Uh, in the middle, though, we do have some nether rack squares down here. This is, of course, being used as garden mulch. You can you can kind of see the uh, the nether rack down there between the shrubbery leaves. And uh, right here, this is where we're going to be starting our trees that I talked about. So our trees will go right there. It's going to be two blocks away from that there. And this is, of course, just one extra block there for that. And uh, there you go. So you just want to make that simple pattern there. And of course, we just this is just uh, five blocks in the middle here for scale to help you count that out. And for the outline of our foundation, we want to go one, two, well, we want to count this one and go one, two, three, ten, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven two, a diagonal of three, and then one here, and then uh, one there also. So I'll just show all that to you in profile. Go over your foundation a couple of times. Make sure you get it correct. And we will go on to the next phase here. So on the next one, we're going up one additional block now. From here, where you placed uh, the dirt and everything, or whatever you placed to count this out, perhaps you used cobble or something for that. Uh, on top of that, we then want to just place a big rectangle of cobblestone all the way around that, like you see done here. And all the places we have exposed grass over here, you want to put your shrubbery leaves on top of that, but leave spaces around the tree. And here, uh, like so. For your grass, you don't want to put the shrub blocks there. And in the middle, if we mark out our center line again, we then want to, on top of this, we want to place a line of cobblestone stairs like so. And then everything we counted out over there for that semicircle, we just want to place cobble directly on top of that there. And your foundation should now look like this on both sides. So we will move on to the next phase. Uh, now from this point onwards, we're going to be going up two blocks at a time. Each subsequent slice I show you will be two blocks taller than the previous one. So over here, uh, here's the rest of the tree trunks. And I already uh, talked about how to build the tree itself, so we can neglect that. And from this point onwards, we will be focusing only on the building. Uh, so for the building, it's pretty easy. Just go around and uh, put down diorite on top of your cobblestone, two blocks tall, and fill all the rest of that in with cobble behind there. Three blocks here, turn the corner, and another three blocks. Here we want to have two flights of cobblestone stairs then a landing of one block, and then we're going to have two more flights of cobblestone stairs right here. 
So let's go ahead and to the next phase and take a look at that. So very simple design, two blocks and a space, and then two blocks and a space. Uh, now for the front, we want to build these little fire pots, which we are, of course, doing out of uh, uh, stone brick stairs here. And I'll just show you a completed version over here. It might make more sense. Like so. Then we just want to put a bit of nether rack, and then upside down cobblestone stairs, and then uh, cobblestone slabs on top of that there, and then go ahead and light your brazier. Of course, we have two of these on either side, serving as a, a nice little memorial lights for our structure. Uh, of course, if you are playing in survival with the uh, fire tick off, I would suggest that you replace the uh, nether rack here and the fire with a standard campfire. Something very non-flammable, because we don't want all your trees to go up in flames. Uh, Behind here, we then want to place the bottommost portions of our pillars. And we, of course, do that with a 5x5 five five thing of cobble. And then a space of one between those, an intercolumation space of one between there for those. And then behind that, we want to have the foundation of our building. And we are doing that in the following way here. And oh, I, should, I also should have mentioned on top of the dial right here, you just want to put up another sheet of cobblestone on top of that here. When you dig your stairs, I briefly glossed over that, but I just want to double back on that. And in the middle here, we can see we have a floor pattern, a circle of cobblestone. Well, you know, it's as good of a circle as we can get in Minecraft at this level of detail. Uh, behind here, though, we do have our columns tied into our building here. And you want to place your stone bricks and your diorite and your cobblestone like you see done here. Of course, I bear in mind these, these blocks here, these are cobblestone. Uh, but over here in my texture pack, it randomizes that both of these are stone bricks right there. So don't don't let that throw you. I know they kind of... They kind of look a little bit similar, but uh, they are they are different blocks. And remember, if you need to, you may download the reference models. This entire tutorial world is available for a download in the video description for both Java and Bedrock versions. All right, I think we covered that. Let's uh, let me show you this here from the top down, like so, and we will move on to the next phase. Uh, so we, uh, we already did these braziers here. So for our columns out front, we just want stone brick stairs and then our diorite here. If you want to go ahead and uh, build up a little bit more, you may place six blocks of diorite here for our Corinthian columns. As you can see, all, all of the columns in this building are gonna be six blocks tall, uh, not, not counting the base and the capital, just six blocks counting the shaft of the diorite. Uh, here we have our very simple doorway. You might want to place your door on the other side of the, the wood there, though. I'll leave that up to you. We have, of course, the interior here. Uh, now, torches, if you're doing this in survival, you will need many more torches than what I have listed here. So I will leave that up to you as to how exactly you want to light up your build. Uh, but I do recommend uh, quite a few of those. And of course, uh, since we have established the pattern for our foundation, we then want to just build it up with a layer of stone bricks and then a layer of cobblestone. And we're going to be doing that through the whole building. We're going to be alternating layers of stone brick and cobblestone as we go. Let's go on to the next phase over here. You can see that a little bit more clearly. Take a look inside. So you can see we have uh, two layers of stone bricks and then a layer of cobble, then a layer of stone bricks, and then a layer of cobble right here. It's just a technique I like to do to uh, layer different materials together on uh, flat surfaces so we can get a little bit more detail uh, from those spaces. So you can see around here we are now just extending our diorite column drums up. As I said there are three blocks now and you can go ahead and extend those all the way up to six. All right next phase over here same deal with the diorite on the outside and everything. Just a small change for the doorway. We have a little lintel over the doorway here. 
And on both sides as well, we have that same detail here and that same detail also for our side niches. All four, uh, well, all three of those, not, uh, not counting the door. Right there. And we will go on to the next phase here. So we have completed our uh, diorite column drums. Now we're beginning to build our Corinthian capitals. Of course, we are using upside down cobblestone stairs and then stone brick stairs on top of that to represent our acanthus leaves. Uh, back here, for we have a small decorative pediment over the doorway. Just uh, five, have five half slabs and three blocks of diorite behind, behind that there. And the same deal also for decorations on the inside as well. Except in here we do have additional blocks and half slabs behind those to interface with the wall. And uh, once you do one of these, you want to do all the other four, or rather all the other three, four total, the same. And uh, back here as well for our pilasters. Like so, and we will go on to the next phase. So uh, now we finish our Corinthian capitals, like I said, and on top of this, we want to put on some cobblestone for our entablature. And in between this, we want to leave three blocks of a three by three space right there for all of those. Three of those, three by three, like so, just to connect the cobblestone to the wall. And behind here, we are just extending the wall straight up according to the same pattern that we made when we built the foundation. Uh, now, at the back, we do have a couple of places where our entablature is going to overhang. That here, we have two blocks here, one there, two here, two there, and one at the back. So I will just uh, place a couple of slabs here so you can get the block count of this right, like so. And uh, that's going to be our center line right there. So I'll just show you that from the top down. And we will move on to the next phase where we're building a bit more of our entablature. And we are doing that, of course, now, every place that you placed cobblestone over there, you then want to come around and place a layer of diorite directly on top of that, like you see done here all the way around the building. And on top of that, you then want to come around and place a cornice of upside down stone brick stairs. Just wrap them around the corners here, like so, all the way around the building, and then all the way around the front. And for our raking cornice, for our pediment, we do have some additional uh, half slabs right there. And for the interior as well, you want to do the same deal, except you want to wrap them around the inside. Like so, here. Uh, it does get a little bit squished at the front here. Uh, because of our pediment out front. So be aware of that. And if I can get some altitude, we will go on to the next phase here. So, we're building on our pointy pediment, right here. Like you see, and uh, let me just break, break some of these blocks. The, uh, these are going to be full blocks, and then these here will be half slabs. Like that there, and that is going to be the slope that we will have for the structure. Like so, but you just want to do all of that out of stone bricks and half slabs, and then put uh, cobblestone half slabs behind that here, and then just a straight sheet of diorite behind that there. And for the roof tiles for this, um, I will just have to let you look at this. We do have some uh, columns that are uh, stuck into the bottom of this, though. A little messy. You could probably just... You could probably make uh, make a lot of that just uh, cobble, I think. And around the edge here, we have our next layer of uh, pilasters. Uh, we also have a um, couple stone slabs directly on top of the cornice here around the building. 
Uh, now, these next set of columns, they're going to sit directly on top of these columns here. So uh, th this block right here will correspond to that block right there. You can see they're directly on top of each other. So we're going to be building the exterior of that again. As we go, it's only, only going to be a little bit different right here at the front. And I'll show you this from the inside as well. And we will move on to the next phase. So here at the top of our triangular pediment, done like so. You want to install your roof tiles here. Just It's just an alternating block pattern like that there with the red nether brick and the deep slate tiles. And around the sides here, we have the same thing I talked about with the pilasters and the walls. They're going up according to the same pattern that we built the first layer. We're just stacking that up again, except we're just uh, we're squishing it into the top of the roof over here. And we do have a couple of blocks of dye right here on the edges for little uh, decorative finales on the side. And in side here as well, same deal. Like so, and we will go on to the next phase. Start on the outside here. So we're finishing off our little pediment. You can go ahead and place an extra block of dowel right, right there. And that will be the end of that. And just got a couple more blocks behind that here. And uh, that will be done. We also need to take a look underneath that, by the way. So we do have some, uh, we have some uh, three by three uh, uh, diorite uh, sort of donut holes right here in the middle. Like so for a little decoration underneath there for the coffers. And on the inside here, we have again the same pattern that we did down here for this. These, these stone bricks here, these correspond to these up here, we are doing the entire thing again, like that there. All right, uh, next phase. So same deal on the outside. You're just alternating your stone bricks and your cobble and extending up your diorite. I think these are now these are now at six blocks tall. So that is going to be the maximum extent of those. And on the inside here as well, I'll show you the uh, the details here for this. Now, we don't have the, the pointy pediments on the one on the top because, well, uh, we, uh, we just ran out of room. So we have to overhang some blocks here, like that there, on all the, on all the four corners of this to round it off, to put in our ceiling. Uh, on the outside, you then want to do another round of Corinthian capitals here. You know the drill with those. Same deal on top of all your column drums all the way around. On the inside, we then want to build another uh, entablature with a diorite and then upside down stone brick stairs in this pattern here. All right, and we will go on to the next phase. So again, we are building another entablature on top of our columns, just like you did down here. You want to do another one up here, except uh, for some reason that, uh, that's an error. How did I manage to do that? Huh. Uh, okay, so the, the reference model is slightly wrong. I don't know how I'm just noticing this. Um, uh, th this level down here, this, this should be cobblestone. Right here. And on top of that, you then want to put the layer of diorite. Uh, just like you did down here, for some reason, I was able to do it correct down here, like so. Uh, you then want to do it uh, right up here for this. Hmm. That's just as clear as day, too. I don't know how I missed that. Perhaps I picked the wrong reference model. Do the tutorial with... Um, I'm not sure how that happened anyway, but uh, you can correct this in your rebuilding of the structure here. Sorry for that. Uh, for our ceiling now, we want to have a, a small ribbed dome on the inside, decorated with nice gold ore. 
like you see done here. Uh, some of these blocks won't be visible like like that there. So you can you can save yourself a little bit of gold ore if you want to just make uh, make that cobble or something like that. I'll show you that from the top down there. And we will move on to the next phase. So it's a little bit more complicated because we have our diorite ribbing for the interior of our dome. So I'll just show you this right here. I'll get uh, real close and go very slowly and pan around the structure here. It's all going to meet at a, uh, a point in the middle here, by the way. Like that there. It's just a, a very, a very uh, small dome on the inside here. And if we go to the next phase and go inside the building, we can see it uh, more completely. Well, perhaps, uh, perhaps a little light. There we go. Night vision always sheds a little light on some things. So we can see the completed ceiling here. Like so, this is this that uh, that center block right here, and you can see everything just meets in the middle right there. All right, let's take a look at the roof now. So on top of the roof, uh, we need to go back to this one. I skipped over that. Uh, so on top of our cornice here, we are, of course, doing another layer of cobblestone slabs, and then behind that, we want to have, say, a, a circle of red nether brick, like you see done here, uh, with uh, eight little bits of diorite around the corners here, because these are going to be some uh, decorative finnels that we have around the edge of our building. You can see we have this one here, corresponding to this rib, to the diagonal rib. Of course, we have a diagonal one. And for our other rib over here, we have another straight one, and then another diagonal one. So you just want to wrap around your full blocks and your half slabs, like you see done here. Not too difficult. It's a very small roof. And uh, once you do one quadrant of this, the other three quadrants are exactly the same, like you see done here. And we do have, uh, we do have the last bits of our ceiling here poking out at the top. All right, uh, next phase, the last bit of the roof. As we finished our ceiling, so we just have a few more blocks to go on the top there. You're just extending up the patterns to meet in the middle at the top, like so. And over here for, of course, the last phase, we have a, just a small little a decorative uh, finale here at the top. Just a few bits of dough right there for that. And uh, once you have done that and uh, gotten the entablature here in the right uh, order, first the first the cobble and then the dough right, uh, your Roman mausoleum will be complete. Uh, now, for the deluxe model, let me extend uh, the tutorial a bit to show you this here in a more cursory detail. Because, as I said, uh, the trees here are all the same, the mausoleum is the same. The only thing that's different is the foundation, the little layout here for the courtyard, and the, uh, the peristyle colonnade we have going all the way around the building. And, of course, these little arches here at the front. Uh, another detail, of course, stolen from Emperor Hadrian's villa at Tivoli, except uh, instead of having the same sized arch in the middle, I have put a double-sized arch here for uh, that. Because I thought it looked nice, and it, it if you look at it here from this, it really frames the mausoleum to give it a more a grand entrance here. Of course, we have it flanked on either side by the trees and everything. Nice little courtyard here for you to relax in and remember your ancestor. Uh, but let's uh, briefly take a look at that. I already went over the dimensions for this one. If you want to build this one, you would need a big rectangle of 45 by 53 like so, and you will want to build uh, this pattern in here. 
Uh, now, of course, you if you've seen my Roman Road tutorial, you will recognize the, the courtyard paving from that tutorial, as also the Greek key pattern has been recycled here for use as uh, shrubbery decorations. So let me zoom in on this here, and I will just give you a good look at that. Like so. I don't think it'll be very difficult for you to do. There's only one block spacing between a lot of this. The edges out there, the grass spacing is three blocks. And uh, everything else, I think, will be uh, fairly self-explanatory. We do have a little bit of glowstone in here for this courtyard here, by the way, uh, to help uh, light things up. And the next phase of that here, every place where you had free grass, you either want to come around and put uh, cobblestone three blocks wide along the perimeter of the building, and then put grass so you can get your three-dimensional Greek key pattern like you see done here. And of course, in the middle, you have the, the footprint of the mausoleum again, uh, which of course, uh, we've just uh, gone over in, excru in excruciating detail so I'm not going to do that again. Now let's come around here though. Now all these columns we're using for the peristyle colonnade, they're exactly the same as was as you built on the front of the uh, pediment already. So you just want to build more of those. And of course they, they will all be without exception. Six blocks tall and then you want to put your Corinthian capitals on top of that there. In the middle here, you, they're all going to have uh, one block spacing in the front here. One block and then space for three and then for one. And then along the sides here, for the most part, they are going to be two blocks apart here. Right there. And then, of course, along the back, we will have one, two, two, and two, and then one again there. And that is going to be the spacing for those. Let me try and get a top-down view of the entire thing. Right there for that. And uh, that is uh, the difficult parts of the particular uh, next phase of this. Because as I said, the trees are the same. The columns are the same. Let me go around here and skip to this phase. Of course, the mausoleum is uh, the, uh, the same. You can see here we have finished our Corinthian capitals again for our columns. And on top of that, we then want to start building an entablature in the right order with cobblestone and then diorite. Then you want to skip, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five blocks there for that. Build the rest of the entablature there and skip one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen blocks for that there. Then skip another five. And then just wrap in a big rectangle the entire entablature around the building. From there, we want to put uh, just a very small uh, roof on it with uh, the upside down stone brick stairs here for the cornice. And then the cobblestone slabs on top of that. And then we have a simple repeating pattern here of cobblestone, uh, red nether brick, and deep slate tiles all the way to the back there, and then turn the corner, shorten it just a little bit there, and also shorten it in the middle. And uh, here's here's the detail around front as well. And uh, for the rest of this, I think it will be uh, more illuminating if I go ahead and skip and just show you a complete model, because from this point onwards, we're only building pretty much the front. So right here. Show you the uh, start the the edge here. So we have uh, some cobblestone slabs we want to put on the top of the entablature around there for that. And then over here we want to build out our little arches, like so, right there, right there. Some nice round Roman arches. Well, you know, Minecraft as round as we can get. And then we want to bend our entablature around that entire thing like so, and put a little uh, decorative finale on top of that there. And it's the same on both sides, by the way. So here is the other side of that one, as you can see. We have another arch that we want to build for three, two, one, two, and then five. And then back down 
the other side there for that round Roman arch. And you want to do the same details you did for the smaller ones, just on a bigger scale. Right here, just wrap your red nether brick around and put your decorative finale on the top there. And uh, once you have done that, the rest of the mausoleum, as I said, is the same. The only thing that's going to be different with this model is when you get towards the top, instead of ending in a point, you just want to build a little box here. And then you want to build uh, this decorative Acroterion statue on top of that there. And I have described this statue many times in many different tutorials, so I'm just going to give you a good uh, 360 view of this here. It's not very difficult. It's just, a, it's just all solid diorite. It's uh, meant to be a winged griffin that you can have on top for decoration of any uh, Greco-Roman period building you choose to construct. And uh, once you have done that, if you have elected to build the deluxe Roman mausoleum, then uh, that also will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the Roman mausoleum. Remember, the world is available for a download in the video description for both Java and Bedrock versions. And I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.